Crews at the Chernobyl plant in Ukraine are nearly three decades into a decommissioning job that experts say could take a century to finish. They face high levels of radiation daily. The government is trying to keep them safe in various ways. The workers live in a specially built town 50 kilometers from the facility. They take a free train to the plant. A nurse is on board should they need any help. The government care goes much further than that, though. This edition of Nuclear Watch is looking at how people fled, uh, how people tied to the cleanup of the Fukushima Daiichi accident here in Japan are trying to learn lessons from, from Chernobyl. NHK World's Mamoru Ichikawa went there to find out more. Our radio origins from Japan visited Ukraine to learn how officials manage the risks workers face. The Japanese government has asked Professor Yuji Okazaki to advise the operator of Fukushima Daiichi on ways to protect crews from radiation. We really want to learn from what you are doing here in Ukraine. A government official told Okazaki their practices are based on lessons from the past. Chernobyl was the world's worst nuclear accident. The Soviet Union rushed thousands of poorly equipped workers to the plant to tackle the crisis. Official figures at the time said 31 of them died within a few months. Many others became seriously ill. Government leaders in Ukraine started implementing changes after the country gained independence following the fall of the Soviet Union. The most important thing is to protect the life and health of workers. Thorough measures are needed to manage their safety and well-being to prevent the risk of accidents or illness. Professor Kazaki went to see how medical staff carry out health screenings on the workers. They periodically check for more than 200 types of illness, including heart disease. Doctors also focus on the eyes. That's where the effects of radiation usually appear. They monitor balance too. Health checkups are an indispensable aspect of our work. We're very grateful to medical institutions. Ukasaka learned that one national institution manages the results of these screenings. The centralized system enables doctors to quickly identify abnormalities and respond. The situation is quite different at Fukushima Daiichi. Screening workers is left up to the contractors that supply the facility with clues. They are not obliged to submit data to the plant's operator or any national institution. Professor Kazaki says Japan has much to learn from what's happening at Chernobyl. Japan hasn't decided how far it wants to go to monitor the health of workers at Fukushima Daiichi. Ukraine provides an example we should follow. Okazaki says Japanese leaders should introduce a centralized system to collect the health data right away. He's now preparing to submit his report to the government. Mamoru Ichikawa, NHK World, Chernobyl, Ukraine.
Voters in Tokyo will be spending the next couple of weeks weighing their options. The race to lead one of the biggest cities in the world is officially underway. Sixteen candidates are running in the gubernatorial election set for February 9th. They're vying to replace Naoki Inose. He led the successful bid to bring the 2020 Olympics to the city. But he resigned after admitting he received funds from a medical group around the time of the last election. He said it was a personal loan. The Tokyo governor has an immense jurisdiction. The budget is equivalent to that of Sweden. About 13 million people live in the Japanese capital. More than 10 million of them are eligible to vote. One of the candidates they'll see on the ballot is Kenji Utsunomiya. He's the former head of the Japan Federation of Bar Associations. He has the recommendation of the Japanese Communist Party and the Social Democratic Party. I hope to make Tokyo the world's best city to work, to live, and a city where people have hope. I'll aim for a society without nuclear plants by sending a message from Tokyo. If you all stand up, we can change Tokyo. If Tokyo can change, Japan can change. Dr. Nakamats is an inventor who's running for governor for his seventh time. Tokyo will be hosting the Olympic Games, so the next governor must be someone who is free from corruption. It's essential that person has an unrestricted imagination, along with international knowledge. Another contender is Toshio Tamogami. He rose through the ranks of Japan's Air Self-Defense Force and became Chief of Staff in 2007. He has the backing of former Tokyo Governor Shintaro Ishihara. We should use funds for public works projects to invite more investment from abroad and improve the economy. That would make Tokyo stronger against disasters and a beautiful city. It would also revitalize the economy. Former Health Minister Yoichi Masazoi is also running in the gubernatorial race. He has the recommendation of the Tokyo chapters of the ruling Liberal Democratic Party and its coalition partner, New Komeito. I want to gather the power of all the people to offer the best hospitality and make the Olympic and Paralympic Games in Tokyo the best ever. It's important to protect everyone's lives and assets. I'll use my experience as health minister to make Tokyo the world's number one city when it comes to welfare. Morihiro Hosokawa is running too. He served as prime minister 20 years ago. He has the voluntary backing of the Democratic Party, the Unity Party, and the People's Life Party. And he is backed by former prime minister Junichiro Koizumi. I think the most important thing for Japan is to send a clear message now that we will end the use of nuclear power generation and that we'll make use of alternative energy. I want to work to build a new Japan by leading the people who hope to design the country's future by tapping into natural and renewable energy. are already energy. busy mapping out their strategies. NHK World's Michael Ambe is part of our team that's tracking the election. Michael, mm -hmm. so what are the main issues candidates will be going over before the election? Mm -hmm. um, they'll be talking about how to deal with Japan's declining birth rate and aging population. Uh, they will also debate economic and employment policies. Disaster preparedness is another issue. Experts say a major earthquake is likely to strike the Tokyo area within the next 30 years. Then there's the 2020 Olympics and Paralympics. Some contenders argue the city needs to focus on building infrastructure and getting athletic facilities ready. All of these issues are expected to resonate with voters. Some foreign media have called this election a referendum on the central government's nuclear policy. Is that true? Um, not necessarily. One candidate has clearly said the future of nuclear power should be the focus of the election. Former Prime Minister Morihiro Hosokawa is running after staying away from politics for more than 15 years. Another former premier is backing him. Junichiro Koizumi left the political world four years ago. They're pushing for Japan to abandon its nuclear plants. None of these facilities is in the Tokyo area.
but the capital is a major consumer of electricity. And the Tokyo Metropolitan Government is a shareholder of Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, the operator of the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant. The former prime ministers are trying to stir up a national debate in an effort to spark change. How are other candidates approaching the issue? Um, former Health Minister Yoichi Masuzoe is vowing to work to increase the ratio of renewable energy in Tokyo. Uh, he says he will aim to build a society that does not depend on nuclear power. Another candidate, lawyer Kenji Utsunomiya, says that phasing out atomic energy is necessary. Former Air Self-Defense Force Chief of Staff Toshio Tamogami argues it's possible to operate nuclear reactors safely. He says it should be up to citizens to decide the pros and cons of nuclear power. Some candidates say the campaign shouldn't be about a single issue. They say there are more important things to talk about. The race to be Tokyo's next governor is shaping up to be an interesting one. The voters have a lot to think about before they cast their ballots. Japan's leaders say they're planning to relax the immigration rules for construction workers. They say the country doesn't have enough skilled labor and they're looking abroad for help. Members of Japan's cabinet have been discussing how to handle the shortage. They say they need more people to rebuild from the 2011 disaster in northeastern Japan, construct facilities for the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo, and repair aging infrastructure. Construction company officials say they're chronically short of workers skilled in plastering and reinforcing concrete. The building firms are trying to poach workers from each other. In 1997, there were almost 4.5 million construction workers in Japan. By 2012, that number has dropped by over a million. Land, Infrastructure and Transport Minister Akihiro Ota said the government plans to accept more people on technical internships. The program lets foreign nationals enter Japan to work in manufacturing or construction. Around 150,000 people are currently taking part. Expanding the technical internship program is one useful option. Other cabinet ministers have sounded a note of caution. Allowing more foreign workers in could cause wages to drop at a time when wage hikes are a key topic of discussion. But government officials say they're committed to accepting more foreign workers from next spring.